Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I've had some requests to explain how I do the Calico Star Blocks for Lori Holt's Calico Garden. The concept that I'm going to talk to you about that's in here uh, used quite a bit actually in quilt piecing uh, when you're making these little triangles is uh, two things. One of them is to maintain the integrity of the base shape and I'll get to that in a second of what I mean by that. And the other one is a concept in garment sewing called turn of cloth. And turn of cloth is the space that the stitch line takes up when, when you're stitching on it. So just kind of keep those two things in mind. I'm making this a quick video. If you want to, uh, you know, really get into it, a lot of my viewers will watch a little bit, stop the video, and do. So it's watch, stop, and do. And go back and, and just kind of look at that. Now, I am no quilt piecing expert by any means, but these are the techniques that work for me to get these blocks done. There are 23 of these blocks, and you can see up here on my design wall, there they are all right there. Not the two big blue ones, but all of the other ones right there. So I can knock one of these blocks out in about 25 minutes. Also another thing that I'm going to be using is something called a clapper. Again, mostly used in garment sewing and the quilt world is just starting to get into that. Uh, Lori Holt has several videos where she does use a clapper. I have one as well and I really like that. So I'm going to do minimal editing on the video. I'm just going to chop out the pieces where I'm moving the camera around so you guys don't get sick. But other than that, I'm just gonna get down and dirty in how this works. I'm working through my paper plate stack of all of my star blocks. And what I did was cut all, it took like two days, and I cut all of the pieces for each star block. There are different sizes of the white background fabric. There are a dark, there are dark colors and there are lighter colors. So this one is kind of monotone. I'm gonna do one that's got contrast. See this, so this one, number 19, it's yellow on yellow and it's kind of monotone. That's not a good one to show a demo with. So I'm gonna to jump to block 20. We've got a lot of contrast here between the pink and the red and the white. So that'll be a good one to show you guys. But what I did with the paper plates was, I got this idea from my quilty buddy, Lisa. So each block, I just cut all the pieces for it, put them on a paper plate and labeled it with a sticky and made a stack. And I am able to carry these stacks around the room as I need. I took some of them in the coach when we went to Lafayette for everything embroidery market. And they just, it's just a great way to keep a lot of pieces in one spot and uh, keep them straight. So let's get stitching. The elements we have here, we have little bitty squares. We have, we have eight little bitty squares. We have eight medium squares. Is that right? No, we have 12 medium squares of the white. And I have one large square of the white. And then we have eight medium squares of the red. I have four long rectangles that are thinner in the red, and then I have four big rectangles in the pink. The big rectangles in the pink are the points that are in each one of the centers on the sides. This is your big square right here. All right, so. So these little ones are going to go on this, on the big pink ones, and then these go together like this, and here is your center square. And that's how all of that is going to go. You need a ruler. A little ruler will work, okay? And I'm going to, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to just do it for you guys so you can see. If you're brand new to doing this, especially with these tiny little blocks, this is something that's really important. All right, I'm going to take 
you can use a pencil, you can use a, a marker or whatever. This is a friction marker, this will iron away. This is the fine point. I need my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I want to talk to you about the concept of turn of cloth, okay? So here we have this tiny little square. The, the best way to do this is to put your ruler from point to point diagonally on the square. And I'm going to draw a line. Now, so I want to talk to you about this. Let me get up really close so you guys can see. So if the ruler is exactly corner to corner diagonally on the fabric, then the line is not exactly corner to corner on the fabric because the ruler is corner to corner so the line which is my stitching line I'm a little off on that let me go let me hold it still it likes to stretch because it's on the bias with that diagonal okay so the line is not actually corner to corner because the ruler is corner to corner so technically one side of this triangle now with, with the line drawn on it is smaller than the other side. And that side that is smaller is the side that is sticking out from under the rectangle, uh, under the ruler. So I'm gonna put a little mark on that side. So I want you to see what I did up real close, okay? If the ruler's corner to corner, the line is not. The line is right next to the corner to corner. And that makes this side the shorter side, the side with the mark. And the reason you want to leave a mark on it is because if you do them all and you go through your process of marking them all, like you, it, it's really efficient for you to just go ahead and go through all of these at the same time and mark corner to corner and I'm going to put my mark there, okay? But if I didn't put my mark there, when I gather them all up, you have a, well, 50-50% chance of getting that right or wrong, as the case may be. So, we don't want to get it wrong. We need the shorter side. That's the side that's going to be cut off, all right? So, I'm going to make my mark, my line, and my mark. And that tells me that's the side I'm gonna cut away. Okay, so I need to do that. Whoop, drop my pen. I need to do that for all of my little squares. <clears throat> and I also need to do it for all of my medium squares. Now again, I don't do this. I have diagonal seam tape on the bed of my machine. I'll show you what that is here in a second. And I use that as a guideline and I'll tell you how I do it. But if you are just starting out, I really recommend that you use this method until you get good at the whole idea, okay? So I've done that for this square as well. I've got a short side and a long side, a, a wider side, and a mark. Okay. So the other concept, I that's the concept of turn of cloth when we get to that is if this is the piece we're going to cut off, if the stitching is right there on that red line, this has room to fold over. And it, when it folds, it's going to fold exactly where you want it to and it won't be too short. Okay. The other thing I talked to you about was maintaining the integrity of the shape. So here is the shape of the larger rectangle. Okay. When I put this piece on and I've got the part with the mark I'm gonna put it exactly on the fabric so that when I look at it from the back I'm still maintaining the integrity of the shape okay it is still looks like a rectangle from the back it should not look like this so it's no longer a rectangle because this part is sticking off, okay? You want this to be exactly right on the edges of this. When we get finished stitching these two squares to this rectangle, you should still have the same shape. 
if you look at it from the back. It's just going to be different colors, okay? So let's go through and I'll show you how I do this. I'll just give you my process of how, I'm, how I do this. Let me get all these together correctly, okay. I threw, I threw my paper plate over here. I usually keep the pieces I'm not ready to use yet on my paper plate. So I'm not ready to use this one or this one. I am ready to use this and these and this. All right, let me back out just a little bit. That's good. So what I'm going to do, this is the Brother PQ 1500. Let me get this up so you can see. This is the Brother PQ 1500 piecing machine. The quality of my stitching exponentially improved when I started using this piecing machine. It's not very expensive. I got mine on Amazon. Y'all, it's only like $800. This thing is the best piecing machine by far for the money. Okay, for the money. It, it's almost professional. It just works so very well. I've got a two and a half inch stitch length right here. It has a, a cutter and here's your reverse and needle up, needle down. And I like to stop with the needle down. It just is so good. So this is the diagonal seam tape. I actually need to, it's starting to peel up. I've had this piece on here for quite some time. So the diagonal seam tape has different colored lines. It's got aqua, red, and aqua or teal or turquoise or whatever. Anyway, so I have this outer one quarter inch line lined up with this quarter inch line right next to the foot right here. So where the needle goes down is the red line. And then what I do when I eyeball this, so if I, if I just put the needle where it's gonna come down exactly on the red line, then the point of the square is not on the red line. The red, the red line here on the white square and the red line here are on the same. So I'm coming in just shy of that point and that's going to give me the turn of cloth allowance that I need to be able to fold that bigger piece over and have it meet the corner over here and maintain the integrity of the shape of the fabric rectangle, okay? So let's do that. Now I will do this all at once. What I try to do to maintain efficiency is to stitch as much as I can without having to cut. That's what I try to do. Stitch as much as I can without having to cut. And I want to go to the ironing board one time and do all of the ironing that I can at one time. So I'm, I'm a bit of a, what do they call it? Some kind of sewer. I can't remember what Jenny Doan calls it. Now see, this one doesn't have a mark on it. So what I do is I align this point right here just to the left of the needle and I align this point right here just to the left of the red line on the diagonal seam tape. So I just touch that corner underneath the foot, make sure this line, this piece is right on the left of the diagonal seam tape and it comes out right. Okay, so here's that chain chain piece right there. Okay. I marked a diagonal line on this corner. I don't, I'm not going to use that one. All right. And then on your squares, I have four of them. I need one, two, three, four of these. When you're piecing, the part that's going to fold over the top, you want to sew with that one on top. Okay. I'm going to sew these. I'm going to fold it to the dark, so I'm going to put the dark on top when I sew. On these blocks, having a quarter inch seam is very important. An accurate quarter inch seam is very important. If you have to draw it with a marker or a pencil so you keep it straight, that's okay. The more you do this, y'all, I've been piecing for 
15 years. The more you do this, the better you'll get. So see, I'm actually doing two different parts at one time without having to cut the thread. Now I'm going to cut. Okay. And I use the cutter on this side of the machine. When you cut these and you've got a stretch right here, this is on the bias, you know, that, that is. I kind of hold them on the thread line so that it doesn't pull. I don't hold them out here on the ends. I hold them on the seam line itself and that keeps the stitches from pulling. Okay. Now remember I said to maintain the integrity of the shape. So it looks like a rectangle from the back. I'm going to fold this point over and I want it to meet that point exactly. And I'm going to crease it with my thumbnail. Okay. So now I've got that. That's what we want. And when I look at it from the back, it still looks the same. Maintain the integrity of the base shape. Okay. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And before I sew the next, before I sew the next one, I'm going to press. So I'm going to do that to all of these pieces now. I pull this up so that the point matches exactly. You don't want to pull it over too far and you don't want to pull it too short. If you put, I got to get this where I know you guys can see, hold on. If you put the long side over here, because of the turn of cloth, the amount of space that is being taken up by that stitch line, this is going to be short. It won't meet and you're going to try to pull it and it's going to skew your block and you don't want that. So that's why you want to make sure that you put that triangle that mark on the triangle so that you know you are putting the smaller half of the fold to the outside. All right, now on this one, I'm just folding it open and I'm creasing it with my fingernail before I take it over to the ironing board. I just like to do that. Also, when you iron, no, when I iron, I do not use steam. I know a lot of people do, but I don't like steam. You use steam in garment sewing. Whenever you want the fabric to bend to your will, you use steam because the moisture will allow those fibers to bend and move. You use steam when you insert a sleeve into an arm's eye. You use steam on a collar or a waistband. I don't use steam when I'm working with woven quilting cottons. Okay, let's go over to the ironing board. This is my clapper. It's from Riley Blake. I'll link to all this stuff below. Okay, now the way I do this is I will lay these four like this. Okay, and I'm just going to press them. This is a Sapporo gravity fed iron. I have had this thing probably eight years now. It lasts forever and it does not spit on your fabric because the water is not in the iron. The water is in the hose on the outside of the iron and it's this solenoid that makes the water turn into steam when you want it to. Okay, so I will put these like this and before I press I'm looking down on it directly to make sure that that original shape of the rectangle is maintained. That point of the white is exactly meeting the point at the edge. Okay, so look at these. See? We've maintained the integrity of the base shape. This is such an important thing in quilting. It is such an important thing. Otherwise, your quarter inch seams won't work. Back to the machine. I'm going to open this up. 
and I will trim off any little loose threads and then cut my quarter inch and I don't worry about trimming this up here because I'm going to trim that in a minute anyway when I sew on the other side. And so I do all my sewing at one time as much as I can. I do my sewing at one time. I do my pressing at one time. I do my cutting at one time and it streamlines the whole process. You can press your seam seams open on these blocks. You don't have to. I don't. I did the first one, but I didn't notice a difference. If you like to do that, please feel free. Okay. So now I'm ready to sew the other one, the other little square on this, this other side of this rectangle. This is going to start just to the left of the needle. Now I wouldn't be eyeballing this if I didn't have diagonal seam tape. And again, I'll link to that below the video as well. Every little tool you can use is a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. I start it just to the left of the needle and my point here is just to the left of the red line and the diagonal seam tape. I find this hard to do on a regular machine that does not have that uh, single hole. It, the fabric has a tendency to wobble around. All right, now on this one, we're gonna need our long red rectangles and you want to put this one with the darker, the white part the white square on the bottom. That's going to go just like that. This can get really confusing. You don't want to sew them like that. You want to sew it like this. So I'm going to fold this over to the dark side. So I'm putting the dark red on top. That's it for these. All right, I'm going to finger press everything. So I'm bringing this up exactly to the top tip. Crease it with my finger. See? Still looks like a rectangle from the back. If you stitch exactly corner to corner, it won't work. That was the biggest thing I had to learn was you cannot stitch corner to corner. You put your ruler corner to corner and draw a line next to the ruler. Once I got that through my thick head, my life became so good. <laughs> so it works out just perfect. Okay, so these are ready to be pressed. I'm going to do the same thing here and press these open. You'll notice I go from the center out. Just giving it an indication where I want it to go. And the fabric, when it's on top, it likes to fold over. You'll be fighting it otherwise. Okay, ready to go over to the ironing board and press these flat with the clapper. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is trim these. I'm going to get rid of the extra threads on the top and cut this. So I have a quarter inch seam allowance right there. Now look, so this one is finished, okay, and I want to show you it fits exactly. It is still the same shape as everybody else at the party, okay, and I've got that perfect quarter inch seam allowance at that tip. It works. I'm not cutting the fabric, I'm just cutting the threads. So it's nice and clean. All right. Now I need two of these and my big square. I didn't give the size measurements. I didn't want, wasn't going to look it up. It's on Lori's blog. 
in, in the sewing guide. Okay, all of which is free for you to look at. Now, I'm going to sew this with the dark side up because of how few seams when I... When I finally sew this whole thing together, the seams, I want to fold it toward the least amount of seams. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave these last three. I'm not ready to cut that just yet. All right, now on this one, I'm going to put these, this is how I think of this, okay? So I'm putting the white square over here in my right hand. I'm going to take another square. This is the medium size square, and I'm going to put it right next to it. And again, I'm going to maintain the shape of the block. Don't put it over and don't be short. All right? And then I'm going to sew. Well, let me use this one I've got a line on already. See, now it's been sitting around. I know which side to cut off because I put a mark on it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it up. Put the side with the mark right over here where it's going to be cut off. So that you've got white, white next to each other. Okay? I'm going to sew directly on the line. And I'm going to do that to the rest of these. Okay, so this has this white square sewn to it, but you can't tell from the back. Maintain the integrity of the original shape. Okay, now on this one, I'm going to take another one of these and put it, so you match these ends up. This is the center row. And now on this one, so the only side that will not have a yellow baby chicks is the one opposite the original white piece. So that's going to go, that's going to fold over and go there, all right? And then this side is opposite of that, so not that side, but the side right next to it. So your white pieces are always going to be touching the white piece in the square. I hope that makes sense. That was easiest for me to remember. That I always put the lighter background fabric next to each other. I'm going to fold this, crease it, so that the seam allowance is pointing to the outside on these. When I go press this, I happen to have words on the fabric that's on top of my ironing station. You may want to do this on, a, on an ironing pad of some sort, maybe like a quilter's cut and press that has got the lines. Let me get one and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you my very, very dirty quilter's cut and press. When you press this, you want to start with this on a line and press it straight. Don't press it so that it skews like this, okay? You want to press it straight. Tell it from the very get-go, this is where I want you to be, and then when it's pressed, put the clapper on it. If you don't have a clapper, you can confiscate a child's wooden block. Uh, that works. You need some sort of untreated wood. So now I'm going to put these up here and crease. I've got a couple of these in the blocks that I finished where I forgot to cut off the bottom part. <laughs> so it has three layers of fabric instead of one. Oops. <laughs> Bet you can't tell which ones they are when it's all said and done. So if that happens, don't die over it. You'll be all right. Just keep going. You can take it apart if you want, but on these small little pieces, I don't like taking them apart. They have a tendency to uh, disintegrate right in front of your very eyes. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go press all these flat. So here we are. I haven't trimmed them yet. You see, I don't have any white hanging over the sides. That's what you're after. So 
So you will use these same concepts over and over and over in your piecing of turn of cloth, maintain the integrity of the base shape. All right, so the first one I'm gonna put like this. This is gonna be my top row, okay? Here's my middle row, and this is gonna be my bottom row. You want white to white, white to white, okay? We don't want that, and we don't want that. We want white to white, so you gotta turn it, just like that. And because I am going to fold toward the pink, I want the pink on top. So I'm gonna match up the corners, just like that, and stitch. Again, white to white. I'm going to fold this over. Now, the reason I'm folding to the center piece is because of the seams, all the seams. I've got one seam here. It just is easier to fold this over onto this flat piece. To me, I, it, it doesn't really matter, I don't guess, but... Now, I like to crease on the ones, I'll crease with my finger. These are, these are not on the bias. These two are on the bias. So I'm, I'm just going to press them together with my thumb and my finger, the way I do that. Okay. And then these, you want your little points pointing outward, just like that. And I flipped it over because I'm going to press my seams to the center. These two seams right here, this one and this one, they're not supposed to match. So don't try to stretch it and make it fit. It's not, they're not supposed to fit like that. Anytime I've got something that's on, on the bias, I do not stretch it. So um, if I pull this this way, It'll, it'll stretch a little bit because that's sewn at an angle. Okay. I've got a little tiny tuck right there. Right in there. I've got a little tuck. Don't worry about that. Just press it. It'll be fine. I'm going to go press these flat. Okay. So up until this point, I have not used pins. I'm going to use pins now because we're going to nest. So when you nest, if you look, let me flip these over. So these seams on the rows one and three are pointing inwards right here. And this seam on row two is pointing outwards. So they will nest together real nice. I take each one and I just kind of slide the fabric until it butts up against its friend there on the other side. And then I've got, where's my little marker? I want to show you guys. I went into great detail in this in the Liberty Quilt Along. Okay. Because there are a lot of stars in that quilt. So these are butted up together. I do not rely on chance that they're going to stay that way. So I will take a pin. This is my method behind my madness on this. I go in at an angle. I don't pin straight and I don't pin like this. I pin at an angle. So I go in one side of the seam allowance over here on my right and I come out on the left side of the seam allowance. And the idea is is that I will pull this pin when I'm stitching this way when I get one stitch over the seam line and I know that they're locked together then I'll pull the pin. So Pinning it at an angle, for me, is the best way to do that to make sure that everything is going to stay exactly where I want. So I'm butting them up together. I'm going to go in one side of the seam line, I marked it in red, and out on the other. And then at the bottom, I like to put my points together, and I will do a straight pin, pinning right here. Okay, And then I can match my points up at the top. This is just how I do it. I know some people do it differently, and that's okay. It's a great big swimming pool. We're all allowed to come in and play in it. So I'm coming up on my 
nesting seam, I'm going to go one stitch over that line, pull my pin. You can hear the presser foot. This thing holds so tightly, that's another reason that my piecing has been so much better. If we did it right, your seam is absolutely stinking perfect in both spots. Now, if you are a tiny bit off, let's say you've got a stitch that it didn't match perfect, that's fine. We're going to slap a big brown circle right over this anyway. But that's how I nest. And to, my method works for me so, so well. I've got a video, a little five minute video on how to nest where I um, really, really go into that too. All right, here we go. Ta-da! Perfect. Okay. So that's it. I will press this so that this goes to the inside. And then what I do, I will take a ruler. I'll make sure that the quarter inch line is right at the tips of the colors. Okay. And if I've got any kind of extra waviness happen out here, I will trim that off to give me a nice even block. Okay. So that's it. That's how I put together the Calico Star Block. It turned out beautiful. And it is supposed to finish at eight and a half. So let me put this on here and show you. There we go. And it does finish at eight and a half square. It's good, right? Just try to remain, try to remember those concepts of turn of cloth and maintain the integrity of the base shape whenever you are adding pieces to corners that are going to turn into triangles. Uh, don't use steam and do not stretch the triangle and it'll, you'll be just fine. So good luck. Uh, you've got 23 of them to make. So by the last one, you'll be a pro. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.